I often get the comments on my videos, just use a PID controller. But what is a PID controller? The PID stands for Proportional, Integral and Differential and is typically used in a control loop for controlling motors. So here we have a motor and we read its position which we bring back here and compare that to the target position which gives us a positional error which we feed into Proportional which basically just multiplies it by something. Integral, which accumulates the error term, and differential, which looks at the rate of change of the error term, and we multiply those by the proportional, integral, and differential terms, add those up, and use that as the input signal to the motor. And here we have a motor, which is actually a servo motor, and a controller for this motor implements a PID controller. The controller for this one is actually right here, hooked up to a beefy power supply. And this servo is from DMM Technology, and they provide a program for tuning the parameters on this servo, I don't like that program that much, so I wrote my own to do the same thing. And on this one, if I move a slider, it becomes active right away, and I can also see a scope screen of the motor position at the same time. So with these servo controllers, we don't actually have a separate proportional term, we just have an overall gain which controls proportional, and then the speed and integral actually also multiply by the overall gain. Makes sense because you typically adjust all three of those together. And I'm starting out by setting the proportional very low and the other two as low as I can set them. And with those settings the motor applies a torque that is proportional to how far off it is. So if I load this it sags a bit and if I load it some more it sags some more. Acts basically like a spring. Now I can make this behavior a lot stiffer by increasing the overall gain which basically controls the proportional gain. And now the motor doesn't let it sag nearly as much. And if I force the servo off position and let it go, you can see it shoots back, but it tends to overshoot a bit. And this gets worse if there's more inertia that we're trying to control, like this clamp in addition. You can really see it go back and forth. And graphing position over time, you can see how it oscillates and settles gradually. Now if we're approaching an intersection with a car, we don't want to overshoot, and so what we do is, depending on how fast we're going, we apply the brakes before we actually get to the stop line. And this is where the differential term comes in. It basically adds the speed to our position, so it kind of anticipates where we're going to be to stop earlier. And on the DMM servo, they call this one speed gain, and I'm just going to set that one to maximum. And if I force it off position now and let it shoot back, you can see it doesn't overshoot, although it seems to be almost a little bit sluggish. And even with more inertia on here, it doesn't overshoot like crazy. So let's reduce that speed gain, which is what they call the differential term, a little bit. And it's much less sluggish and still doesn't overshoot. Let's reduce it some more. And now we can see it overshoots a little bit. And tweaking that, now at 63 for the speed gain, we get just a tiny bit of overshoot, but sometimes we want a little bit of that because to eliminate all the overshoot usually makes it a bit sluggish. So that is tweaked for this lever, but now if I want to control something with a bit more inertia by adding this clamp, it overshoots because I actually need a different speed gain depending on how heavy a thing I'm trying to control. And if you were driving a truck that's heavily loaded, you'd have to hit the brakes sooner and harder before hitting the stop line to not overshoot. Same thing with a servo, if it's got more inertia, it just needs to slow down sooner. And that's what the proportional term is all about. It's all about avoiding overshoot and avoiding oscillations. Now we want our motor, of course, to also reach its target, so I set up a pointer here, which is where the target is. And if I load that motor up, then it needs to be off by a little bit before it applies force. And even if I remove the weight, it sometimes doesn't hit target because there's just a little bit of friction in the system because it'll only apply torque in proportion to how far it's off and if there's a bit of friction, it may not come back. Now normally, even without an integral term, it'll get much closer to target. It's just I've got the gain set really low right now so that everything responds more slowly so you can actually see what's happening. And this is where the integral term comes in called integral gain here. And this is a bit weird because setting it to 1 actually turns it off completely on here. I've tried setting that to 0, the servo controller does not like that, but basically 1 is 0 in here. But let's set the integral gain to the next highest value, we'll just set it to 2, so we have a slight integral gain. And we can see this is on target now, and it comes back to target slowly, because I have a very slow integral term on here. 
And even if I apply a constant load, it comes back. Although if I knock the load off now, it's going to be off and it needs to basically do the same correction in reverse. And that's sort of like compensating for the heavy weight by continuously pulling on it. But if that weight suddenly changes, we can't help but raise our arm because we're still used to pulling. And I set the integral very low, which would be appropriate for a very slowly changing static load that the motor always has to deal with. Basically, it kind of slowly compensates for that load. And I can increase the integral gain to make it respond to changes in load much faster. And let's crank it up by a lot. Whoa! And let's crank that integral gain even more. Whoa! And we start hitting some instability. So as we increase the integral gain too much, basically the integral part of the controller becomes way more responsive at about the same rate as the main control loop. So it starts to try to pull things in while we're still actually trying to approach. So as we approach our target, the integral already builds way up, causing it to overshoot, and then it shoots past it, and even before we come back, the integral term is also, again, built up too much before we hit target, and so that can lead to oscillations. Generally, you want to be very cautious setting the integral term, preferably as low as possible, really. A PID controller shouldn't be called a PID controller, it should be called a PDI controller, as in proportional differential, and integral last because you want to be very cautious about setting the integral. It's just PDI doesn't sound nearly as good as PID. And that was going unstable even though the speed gain was set really high which really tends to dampen things a lot. So let's set the speed gain low and see how we can crank up the integral gain before things go unstable. So that's what the integral does. It basically allows the servo to move right on position, removing cumulative errors. But you have to be careful because too much of it makes the controller unstable. So these sliders control the PID parameters, but there's also the S-curve parameters. So we have the PID controller and that gets a target position and that has to come from somewhere. So typically if we're using the servo in a CNC, we would be using Basically a pulse counter works just like a stepper motor and that gives us a target position and then approaches where it needs to go. But if we're not doing a CNC router or milling machine, we can let the thing make its own motion curves and that's what this S parameter block is for. So it gets target position commands and it figures out how to approach that smoothly. And the whole S curve thing is all about accelerating at a constant rate then moving at a constant speed and decelerating for a motion. So if we wanted to approach a target position, we accelerate here, so that would be like a parabola. Then constant speed and decelerating to exactly hit that target position. And because it's curved here and straight here and curved here, it's a little bit like an S, so we call that an S-curve. And if instead of a CNC router we were building some kind of a pick-and-place robot, we can just issue commands saying, go to this position, and this S-curve generator will basically figure out how to accelerate and decelerate to hit that position bang on without too much jerkiness. So that part isn't the PID controller, but it's a very useful part of a servo. So right now I've got these parameters set to hold the position very well, very steady and stiff. And now using these parameters I can just tell my program to do a test motion. And it's actually doing that very gradually because I configured it for low acceleration and low speed. But uh, let's allow much greater acceleration. And it starts much more spontaneously now. And now, crank it up even more. And now I'm going to crank up the speed that I allow it to go at, because it's going actually at a very constant speed sweeping back and forth. So I'm just going to double that. And increase it some more. And some more. And some more. And I'll crank up the acceleration some more now. And having tweaked those parameters for a little bit now, it moves back very quietly, quickly. And I don't think it overshoots very much. 
Nope, does not overshoot. And this, of course, is all too fast to see very well on camera. And this is why I wrote this program, because I can just move the sliders and have the server respond right away, which makes it much less cumbersome than the software that it comes with. And the server motor and controller was provided by DMM Technology. They make a lot of different servers for CNC's and robots and such. And if you want to use my code, it's up on my GitHub. The program is called servotune.py.